Welcome to Lame by Science Day live session with IDEX. I see some familiar faces who were with us at the um, previous sessions. Thank you so much for staying with us. Um, right now at 10, we're joined by Tori Dennis from IDEX. Um, very exciting. And for those of you who are new, I just wanted to say that the chat is on and we encourage everybody to say hi, to say what schools you're from, um, and then leave any questions you have for Tori. I have some questions that I printed off um, that were sent to us from other schools, but you know, live questions always take precedence and we will ask them. We'll try to ask as many as we can. We also encourage everybody to have their camera on. If you would like to ask a question in person, please raise your virtual hand so we actually see it and we'll let you speak if we have time. And without further ado, oh, I should also say, my name is Agnieszka Carpenter and I'm the executive director of BioMaine and BioMaine is the organizer of Maine Bioscience Day. Okay, and now Tori, your turn. Morning, everybody. My name's Tori. Thanks for joining. Really excited to see all your faces on here. Um, so I am a associate scientist at IDEX Laboratories right in Westbrook, Maine. Some of you have probably even driven by the building or have heard of us before or know somebody who works there. We're a really big company um, in Maine, so it's probably a familiar name. I work in the research and development department of IDEX. So I work in a laboratory setting on the product support team. What we do is basically address any concerns that customers have with their product in the field. We also work to improve products. So I'm often in the laboratory um, planning experiments, running experiments, and then looking at the data with a group of other scientists, other engineers, other people who look at documents. Um, and so we all work together to keep our customers happy and um, our pets healthy. So some of you, I'm sure, have pets at home. And if they've, I see some of you nodding. Yes, I know we all love our pets. I have pets. I hope you guys saw them in the video. Um, but if they've been to the vet, it's really likely that they've had testing to check on their health. And it's likely that um, IDEX products have been used to test for things like Lyme disease and heartworm, things that dogs can get from mosquitoes and ticks. Um, so it's likely that your pets have had an interaction with IDEX and you may have not even known. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to answer questions. So feel free to ask away. Okay. My first question is unrelated to science, but I have to ask, what are your dog's names? Okay, great question. Um, so the larger um, yellow lab is Murphy. Um, he is 10 years old, so he's getting up there. He's a wise old man. He has some white on his muzzle, as you guys probably saw. The younger lab is two. His name's Samson. He tries to play with Murphy a lot, and Murphy is sometimes too tired to play. Um, and then the black cat is Russell. And he hangs out in the yard and is pretty relaxed. I um, mean, he's four, so we have a wide variety of ages. Okay, great. Um, thank you. So I have my first question here that's specifically to you that came from Bangor Middle School. Um, and the question is, what is the coolest thing that you have discovered while working in the lab? And also, where did you go to college for how long and what was your degree? That's a question from Madison. Okay, thanks Madison for your question. I will start with the first question about the coolest discovery. So I'm not on a specific discovery team right now. Um, so there's not a lot of new novel discoveries that I'm making. We work a lot with products that are already in the field. Um, but I will say one really cool thing that I've seen in the lab um, actually had nothing to do with the work that I was doing. I receive samples in the mail all the time for um, testing that I need to perform. But one day I received a sample that wasn't meant for me and it was meant for our reference laboratory, which is basically a lab that also does um, sample testing for IDEX. But it was a tumor from a dog that was the size of a watermelon. And it was so heavy <laughs> that I had no idea what to do with it. 
um, and it had hair and skin and it was just really big. And so um, that was one of the most interesting things that I got in the mail. And so I sent it back to where it was supposed to go, but that was an interesting one. Hard to believe that something that large can grow on a dog. Um, but luckily it was off the dog and uh, hopefully that dog is doing well now. Yeah. Another really um, interesting thing that I see in my job are the pet names that come in. Um, and so I think my favorite one right now actually was last week and it was a dog um, named Mando. I don't know if any of you watch Disney Plus, the Mandalorian show, but um, that's my favorite dog name so far. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so for the school, I can answer the school question. If, if right. that's great. Okay. Okay. So um, I went to Lewiston High School. I'm from Maine. I grew up in Maine. Um, and I was always interested in biology. I went to the University of New England for college for a four-year degree, a bachelor's degree in medical biology. Um, and I worked in a laboratory while I was there. And so sometimes in college, you can apply to work in a position that is in your field of interest. And so at UNE, they had um, labs where students could work um, to see if they liked it, to gain some experience, to help get a job later on. And so luckily, um, that's what I did and that helped me get my job at IDEX. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, there are lots of questions coming in. So okay. <laughs> pardon, um, there's a question from Madeline and the question is, when testing your products, do you use both healthy and sick animals? Yes, that's a great question. So we do test both healthy and sick animals. So some of our tests are a screening test. So when animals go in just for their regular checkup, they might get tested for um, things like Lyme or heartworm or anaplasma or like, yeah, just to see um, how their general health is. IDEX has a ton of tests that um, I don't specifically work with. Um, but those are used regularly for healthy pets. And then of course we have tests for sick pets to diagnose things um, that need to be caught right away. So we have both of those and I've tested both. Okay. And another question, how do you know the test kits are really working and are ready to ship out? That's an awesome question. So basically all of our tests before they leave IDEX are thoroughly tested and checked to make sure that once they're in the veterinarian's hands, that they'll work appropriately and the animal will be diagnosed correctly. So we have a quality control department, which is a really common department um, for bioscience companies. And some testing goes on before it gets to them, um, but there they can help put the final stamp of approval to make sure that the test is working properly. And they, they do a ton of testing there in that department to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, did you always know you were going to be a scientist? No, I didn't know I was always going to be a scientist. I always knew that I enjoyed science. In high school, they had um, biology classes that were a little bit more specific as like elective classes that you could just take if you were interested in. And so I took things like anatomy or um, AP biology. Those were some things that help me understand where my passion lied. Um, and then when I went to college, I had initially wanted to go for um, pre-medical degree to go to medical school. But when I started working in the research lab at UNE, I discovered that I really liked all of the hands-on lab work. And so that actually kind of shifted my goal to working in a lab. And so that's where I ended up. That's interesting that you say that because our first session today at 8.30 was with Dr. Davis Knowlton from BBA Solutions and she had the exact same story. She wanted to go to medical, medical school and took a, took a break and then ended up in the lab and loved it so much. So what's it like to work at a lab? Why do you love it? I love working in a lab because it's something different every day um, and there's a lot of different opportunities to work as a team and work independently. So I get to work with a group of other people who are interested in the things I'm interested in every day. Um, and I get to test like blood samples and use equipment and microscopes, but I also get to um, work independently on my own sometimes, which I also enjoy. Mm -hmm. I see a question from Greenville Middle School. Um, do you work directly with animals? 
That's a really good question. I don't work directly with animals. We don't have any animals in the building um, in Westbrook. And so I work with the animal samples. So I work with blood samples. I work with fecal samples, which is another word for poop. So that can be really fun sometimes, a little bit smelly, but it's just part of the job. Um, so those are mainly the two types of samples that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, a question that came in a couple of times, I think already, what is the favorite part of your job? My favorite part of my job, I think it's put, I still think that it's putting on my lab coat every day. Um, I love the uniform. It's really fun. You get to put on your lab coat. We get to wear jeans in the lab um, most of the time. So it's really a comfortable setting. Um, I have my own lab bench space. So it's like just kind of going to my home spot every day. And it's just, like I said, it's something new where we always have kind of different experiments going and so it's upbeat and I like that pace. So if you like things that are hands-on and um, something new every day, that's definitely a job that has that. Mm -hmm. And a somewhat related question. This question is from Ayana. Hi. Um, what is the hardest part of your job? The hardest part. That's a great question, Ayana. I think that problem solving in general can sometimes be a little bit like nerve wracking of a topic, um, especially for students, you know, like when you take a test or when you're working on a really challenging homework problem. My job is centered around problem solving. Um, and so sometimes you can feel like you have this really hard problem that you're not sure how you're going to solve, but it's also the most rewarding. And it's also great to know that you're not alone in solving that problem. You have a team of other people that come together for the problem solving process and, um, figure out what's going on. And so even though sometimes we have some really tough problems or some really tough um, things that we want to work towards, it's, it's great because we have a whole team of people that can help us do it. And so I think the teamwork part makes it um, very manageable for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I have a question that I ask all of our presenters. Um, it came from Bangor Middle School and it is, um, do you have to do a lot of writing in your job? And was it hard to find a job in bioscience? So I will start with the first question about the writing in my job. It's not the main part of my job, but it is an important part. It's not writing in the sense that it's like writing an essay. It's more writing that reflects what I'm doing. So in my laboratory notebook, for example, um, for every experiment, we document what we do, how we did it, just in case we want to go back and do it again or take a deeper look at the results. And so the type of writing that we do is a little bit different than like writing an essay, so to speak, but there is some, and it's mostly just documenting exactly what we're doing um, and then writing down our conclusions of what we found in our experiment. So usually you're doing it right while you're doing your experiment. So it's just part of it. Um, so overall, it's not, it's not too much, I would say, which is part of the reason why I like the job. Right, okay. Um, okay, so our previous session was, was with Chuck Lubelzik at MMCRI and he works with ticks. So we had a lot of questions about Lyme disease and I see there's one question about Lyme disease here. Um, and the question is, why are Lyme disease tests more accurate for dogs than for humans? That's a good question and that I unfortunately don't know the answer to, but I'd be happy to loop back around with the teacher if you give me the name of the school and I'll do my best to get an answer for the student. Um, but I will say that the IDEX Lyme test is really awesome. Um, and we have a lot of access to animal samples. Um, and so we've taken, you know, the great steps to make a test that's really um, accurate for our pets. So I'm not sure why, um, but I can definitely try and loop back around on that one. Yeah, and it, we may not know, um, but I didn't actually know that the, that the pet tests are more accurate. Maybe because IDEX is awesome and that's why. <laughs> um, and then another question, how do you test the tests? How do we test the tests? That's a great question. So our tests have a ton of different components. So to make the test work, there's actually a lot going on in there. It's a small test if we're referring to a SNAP test, um, but there are a lot of different components. And so when we are testing the tests, like you say, 
or troubleshooting or making improvements, we look at the different pieces of the test to make sure that they're functioning properly. So we kind of break it down to all of its different parts and take a look at each of them to see how they're functioning. So we have a lot of um, components of our test that are liquid components. And so that's an example of a component that we can um, take a look at to see how the test is functioning. Mm -hmm. And then two questions related to what kind of animals the tests are for. One is, are your tests just for smaller animals or are there tests made for larger animals? And then the other one was, um, do you only make tests for common pets such as cats and dogs or do you make tests for pets such as snakes and spiders or maybe fish? <laughs> Those are great questions. Um, so I work personally more closely with the tests for cats and dogs. But IDEX does offer a wide variety of tests for other animals, horses, pigs, cows, chickens. So we have a lot of other tests. We also have tests that um, test water quality um, and dairy products. We have things um, like for pigs, for birds. We have, an, we have some avian tests, so bird tests. Um, so we have a wide variety and IDEX.com actually has the full suite of all of the tests that we offer if anyone's interested and wants to see um, the different tests that we have. Do you work specifically with, um, you know, a test for a certain animal? Yes. So I work most closely with tests for cats and dogs for infectious diseases. So for things like heartworm, Lyme, um, other things in cats, specifically something called feline leukemia virus another virus called feline immunodeficiency virus. Um, we also do some fecal testing such as parvovirus um, and Giardia. So those are a few um, other canine tests. Mm -hmm. uh, I see one question that's maybe not so related to the lab or the test, but I like the question. Do you like working alone or with a team better? That's a good question. I think it's almost equal. I like working with a team, especially on projects where I need some information that I might not be an expert on. So I am more of a junior level scientist on my team. I've worked there for three years and I have my bachelor's degree, but oftentimes people who are part, who are part of my team have more experience at IDEX or they have a higher degree. Um, and they can offer a lot more information on a project. Um, and so I like working with them because they can really help me work towards the solution to problems. Um, and it's also just more fun working with people on a project, more hands to get things done. Also, we have a ton of fun in the lab, just like, you know, I'm sure at school or over Zoom, we have conversations, we talk about things that we like, our hobbies. And so, yeah, it's a place to do work, but we also just really enjoy working with each other and um, getting to know one another. So we have a good community of people there. Um, and then as far as independently, when I'm maybe like doing more of my notebook or I have something that I really need to focus on, um, I do like working independently because it gives me, you know, like more of a quiet space to um, do something on my own. So I think it offers both of that. And I, I like working with the team and independently depending on what the task is. Mm -hmm. um, so when you go back to middle school years of yours and Lewiston, what was your experience with your science classes? Um, did you like science? Did you ever think you would be doing it for, you know, for work? Yeah, I, I did love science. Um, I specifically remember my science teacher in middle school. Um, he was just so passionate about it. We had a ton of fun in that science class and, that, and that's what I think drew me to it. Um, we did a lot. We did a huge space unit. Um, and even though that's not related to um, the work that I'm doing now, I think just seeing the wide variety of options in science um, made me realize that it's something that I could pursue. We did a ton of different topics and just because, you know, infectious disease is the one I landed in doesn't mean it's the only one. Even some of the students in my science class that were interested in art or engineering or more math centered, there's a ton of um, opportunities in the science field that are related to those things. So if you like art or drawing, you know, there's anatomical drawing that you can do. Um, 
or there's, you know, designing textbooks or designing, you know, any types of inserts for any kits and that sort of thing. So there's a ton of different opportunities in science, even if it's not, you know, sitting at a bench. Um, I know I did see an engineering question in the list from earlier, and there definitely are opportunities in bioscience for engineers. We have instruments that um, we offer at IDEX and engineers play a huge role in creating those and maintaining them in their software. We have a huge production floor where there's always engineers making sure all the equipment's working, um, that we're getting things done as quickly as possible and as best as possible. So there's a ton of different opportunities in science, even if sitting at a lab bench might not be the thing that you think you might wanna do. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I saw an interesting question here that had to do with, oh, oh here it is, from Melissa. Have you ever had a lab go really poorly or an experiment? If so, can you share that experience? Sure. Yeah, so um, just like any other um, person, I make mistakes sometimes. Um, so that definitely happens. I once was carrying um, a large <laughs> um, bucket of water and I tripped on my shoelace and I dumped the entire bucket of water everywhere. Thankfully it was water and nothing <laughs> important. Um, but sometimes you spill things and sometimes you, you know, you make a mistake. Um, I've made other types of like mistakes or something doesn't go as planned and, um, and really I just do it again. You know, there's a lot of things where sometimes things just happen. Sometimes I've thought I've made a mistake in the lab because the results I got weren't what I was expecting. And then I run it again. And sure enough, um, we had done it correctly. It was just something unexpected. So I think in any field, people, you know, we're human, we make mistakes. It's okay. As long as we work our best to, to correct it and do better the next time. Um, and so I think it's just, that's just a part of any job. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, another question about tests. How long does it take to make a new test? And a related one, on average, how many different tests do you do in a day? Sure. Um, so I can do, in terms of how many things we can test, I've done up to like 300 or 400 tests in a day. And so um, that was kind of maxed me out. But um, it depends what tests you're doing. So some of our tests take a long time to run and some of them are take a really short time to run. So it all depends um, on what we're doing for um, a product that day. But sometimes we'll have a project in general that'll take us a few weeks or even longer than that, a year. So it just depends on the nature of the project. Okay. Uh, and also what test is the hardest to make if you can share that for you? The hardest to make. So I don't actually make the products myself at my lab bench. We have um, the production area that creates them all. Um, but we do have one that takes a longer time to run. Um, it's called a Western blot. It's basically a way that we um, detect a virus, um, a specific virus in cats called feline immunodeficiency virus. And that test can take about five hours. And so that's a long one. But at the end, we do get a really um, telling result in terms of if the cat's positive or, or negative for that virus. So that's a longer one. Um, but there's actually only a few steps. It just takes a long time for um, the actual test to develop. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, thank you. I'm looking at my list here because I wanted to really ask you this one question from the list from Rachel. And the question is, um, how long did it take you to reach your goals? And are you looking to get a PhD? Thanks, Rachel. I started with a goal to go to medical school. And so my goal changed a lot when I realized that I actually love being in the lab. And so I think it probably took me about four years to reach my goal of getting a job in my field. And I was really happy to see that I could go to school in Maine and find a job in Maine in my field. Um, and so it took me about that long to, to actually achieve my goal of getting into my uh, career. But um, I still have other goals that I uh, haven't yet achieved that I'm still working towards. Um, I think it's always good to set goals for yourself, even smaller ones for, you know, daily or weekly. 
Um, but yes, I would love to continue my education and work towards something like a master's degree or a PhD. Um, a lot of the great people that I work with have upper degrees. And so it's something that I definitely have a goal to work towards. Okay, um, thank you. We don't have much time left, but I did see one question appear a couple of times and it was, what is your fa favorite animal or what is your favorite animal to work with? Which you mentioned you don't work hands-on with animals, but still, what's your favorite animal? Oh, that's such a hard question. Um, my favorite animal. Well, I do really love my cats because of their personality. Um, I think cats, um, they have a really old history going back in terms of their domestication. And so they are just really smart. And I like how unique all my cats are. Um, and, but other than cats or dogs, my favorite animal I think I would have to say a moose because they're just so big and they seem, you know, just, they walk slowly. And so I think I like them and they're main animals. So I'm kind of biased. So that's I next to make tests for moose. I don't know the answer to that. Probably actually. That's a good one. But again, I can, I can reach out and try and get an answer to that. Um, okay, I think we're going to stop here. I see there are more questions and I apologize um, to anybody whose questions I didn't ask. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for participating in this year's uh, Main by Science Day and thank you Tori so much for your time today and for sharing your story and your work with us. Um, I wanted to wish everybody a happy Friday and a good weekend and thanks for spending this morning with us. Bye. Thanks, everybody.